Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. This past summer, in the trailer park, we had a, an outdoor gathering of some of the people who live here, and one of my neighbors was eating my lamb brioats. The recipe is on the website, which are made with phyllo dough. And he commented that his all-time favorite treat is also made with phyllo dough, baklava. Wink, wink, hint, hint. So that's what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make baklava because I have someone onto whom I can dump all those unwanted calories. I don't want them in the house. I've lost 30 pounds. I don't need a gazillion calories of baklava here in the house. So. I'm going to make baklava today, and let's first get into the ingredients I'm going to be using for making my baklava. For my baklava, I have one and a half cups, which is 680 grams of walnuts. These are too coarsely chopped. These are in the store sold as walnut pieces. I'll be finally chopping those in the food processor. I have one half cup, which is three and a half ounces or 100 grams sugar, one quarter teaspoon ground cinnamon, 1 8th teaspoon ground cloves. I have a lemon and an orange here. I'm going to be using in the baklava half of the zest from the lemon and a quarter of the zest from the orange. I have one box, which is a pound or 454 grams phyllo dough sheets. And then finally, I have half a cup of melted butter. That's 120 milliliters. I may be melting more butter as I need it. Better to start low so I don't waste any. Then for the syrup, I'm using 3 quarter cup, which is 5 ounces or 150 grams sugar. 3 quarter cup, 175 milliliters water. Again, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. The other half of the zest from the lemon and then another quarter of the zest from the orange. And then finally, I have three quarter cups or 180 milliliters. If you're measuring this by weight, it's eight ounces, 227 grams of honey. So those are the ingredients I'm using to make my baklava today. First thing I want to do is I want to zest my citrus here. I'm going to trim the edge of this, ends of these lemon off. It'll make it a little bit easier to zest. I'm going to use half in the baklava and half in the syrup. So I'm going to zest this whole, or whole lemon. You just want the yellow part off the surface. It has the citrus oils in it. And the white part underneath, this is bitter. So you avoid that. That's pretty much got all of it. Okay. I want to divide that into roughly two equal parts. Okay. And now half the orange. A little bit more. That would be enough. And again, divide this into two halves. And there's my zested citrus. I'm going to grind my walnuts, as I mentioned, in my food processor. I think I'll put only about half in there and a quarter on the floor. And then, as I always do, because it's Makes less to clean up. Put a little barrier on the top. And then this top part stays clean. 
Okay, just want to grind these up and pulverize them until they're fairly fine. I don't want to reduce them down to talcum powder, but I want to get them fairly fine. That looks good. Kind of like the texture of cornmeal, I guess. So there's a close-up of the chopped walnuts. You can see how fairly fine they are. Again, if you know the texture of cornmeal, I tried making baklava one time without chopping the nuts up, and it, they just fell apart because the layers of phyllo dough wouldn't stick together. They were all held apart by all of these large pieces of walnut. So I think this will be this will work much better. I'm ready to combine my filling ingredients now. There's my pulverized walnuts, the sugar. I ground cinnamon and ground cloves, and then my citrus zest. Okay. As I combine these, the sugar really is going to, a lot of it's just going to go to the bottom. Less so with this finer cut, finer grinding rather, of walnuts than if I were using those larger chunks of coarsely chopped walnuts. I'm looking for my zest because that's going to kind of stick together a little bit, so I want to break that up and get it distributed better. See how it kind of sticks together. Okay, so there's my walnut mixture. That's ready to set aside, and I can start building my baklava. I lined my baking pan with parchment paper. And I'm kind of holding it in place with these little binder clips. I'll remove those before the pan goes in the oven. I'm going to open my phyllo dough here. This comes frozen and you just put it in the refrigerator overnight or 24 hours and let it thaw out and then it's ready to use. It's very very thin sheets of, of um, dough and as such it's a little bit brittle and delicate to work with. But I've worked with it a lot. I really like using phyllo dough for making pie shells, for savory pies. You can see how diaphanous that is. I'm going to put one sheet in the bottom of my pan and then just very lightly butter that. I'm going across in this direction because there's a grain that runs through that. And this first sheet, because there's nothing really to protect it, can tear very easily. If I go this way, well here I'll show you. See how easily it tears right there? And then once I do that, Then I can put the second sheet in by crossing the grains. Like so. And that'll strengthen it. Now the grains are crisscrossed. And that'll help. Fold in that little bit of extra right there. And I'm going to do about eight sheets to start off with. That'll give me my bottom crust. Kind of set this in this way so that the overlap is on the other side. 
between eight sheets and overlaps, I'll probably have about 10 or 12 layers in the bottom by the time I'm done arranging all of this. You want to work fairly quickly because this phyllo dough is so thin that it will dry out quickly. If you have to walk away for any length of time, cover it with a sheet of plastic wrap on really, really dry days when the humidity is really low. I'll even cover it with a damp piece of fabric. Just damp, not wet, because then it'll, it'll make the dough stick to itself. And then it's really, once you do that, it's almost impossible to work with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle a few tablespoons of my mixture in there. Distribute that around a little bit. Again, now I'm working with a single layer, so I want to be really careful as I butter this. Because I'm not getting any help from the walnuts underneath as far as holding this together. Oops. Okay. Then once again, another sheet of phyllo dough. And I'm going to keep working like this, back and forth, adding walnuts and sugar, that walnut mixture, and phyllo dough until I use up all of that walnut mixture and I should have actually plenty of phyllo dough left over. Okay, so this is going to take me a while to get all of this in, but it will go in. Here goes the last of my nut walnut filling. Spread that around evenly. I did open the second package of phyllo dough. I used all the sheets from that first roll, even though a few of them were sticking a little bit. They came apart well enough. And now just as I built up a bottom crust with eight sheets of dough. I'm going to do that here. I'm going to build up a top crust. Okay, so that one went in this way, just like the other bottom. I'm going to cross the grains here. As you can see, this pretty near filled this pan. This is a 9 by 13 inch, which is a 23 by 33 centimeter roasting pan. I finally found one made in the USA. All right, I'm going to do something that's going to require another sheet because this is already wet with butter. So nine on top is not going to cause a problem. 
what I want to do is I want to press down to make sure that this baklava is well adhered together. So that it doesn't come apart when I go to cut it. Okay, perfect. Now I can butter this top sheet. As I was saying, I finally found one that was made in the USA. I try to buy products these days made in the USA because we need jobs here in this country. No point in giving jobs to people in other countries when we need them so badly here. To me, manufacturers would do a great service to themselves if they would emblazon on the outside of their packages, made in the USA, giving jobs to Americans, and use that as an advertising campaign. I think they would sell more products. You American companies can pay me what you think that's worth as far as an advertising campaign. I'll bet Madison Avenue couldn't come up with anything as good. Okay. So there it is. Now, I've got some left over, some phyllo dough, as I knew I would. I don't know what I'll do with that. Maybe I'll save it and make some sort of dessert with it later. I'll wrap it up so it doesn't dry out. And I'm going to heat my oven to 350 degrees and bake this 45 to 60 minutes. I'm pretty sure it's going to go 60 minutes the last time it did. I want to get a nice browning on the top. But first what I need to do is clean up my mess a little bit and then I want to score this with a knife before it goes into the oven. I want to start cutting down through this baklava. Pretty much down to the bottom. Just about done. I haven't mentioned it yet, but you probably want to do this in a metal baking pan, not glass, because later on when this comes out of the oven and it's hot, I'm going to be pouring syrup into it. And that syrup could crack the glass, I'm afraid. So I use metal. So as soon as my oven comes up to heat, I'm going to put this in the oven. Again, my oven is at coming up to 350 degrees, 45 to 60 minutes. Oh, 350 degrees is about 175 degrees centigrade. 45 to 60 minutes until it's nicely browned on top. Very likely it'll take 60 minutes. I'm heating a little saucepan on the stove here. This is one of my favorites, the French made ceramic saucepan that a friend of mine gave me, Marilyn. So my sugar is in there, my water. Those are my two zests the cinnamon, and then finally, the honey. And mostly what I'm concerned with here is I want to get that sugar dissolved. So I'm going to bring this just up to the boil, and that should be good enough. That cinnamon will float to the top for the time being, but once this turns into a syrup, that'll incorporate. This has come up to a boil. You can see it boiling there. If you look under that foam, I'll turn this heat off, you'll see that it's dark and clear underneath. 
that foam will eventually incorporate back down again. But that darkness, that clear, transparent color there is because the sugar now is dissolved. It was cloudy before. Here it is, out of the oven. That's fresh hot from the oven. I did reheat my syrup. Just brought it up to the boil. You can hear, hear that sizzling in there. And I think that's enough. I'm not going to put it all in there. Now comes the hardest part. Waiting for this to cool before I can taste it. It's got to cool down thoroughly and then you can cut, cut it apart again and then plate it and serve it. I managed to get one of the edge pieces out and now I want to get one of these inner pieces out. Ah, good. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful piece of baklava. Isn't that fantastic looking? Okay, now to taste this and see how delicious it is. I have so been waiting for this. I really think that pressing it down before cutting it, before it went into the oven, really gives me that dense, firm baklava rather than something so flaky it would fall apart. Mm hmm. It's sweet. You can taste the honey, but it has a nice citrus flavor to it. Oh, that is just fantastic. Baklava. Excuse me, I gotta go enjoy my sweet confection here. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.